Hello, everyone. I can see a bunch of people joining now. Um, I'm not going to record the webinar just yet. Just wanted to start it so to give everybody a minute to be able to get on. Uh, today, we're talking about just one uh, tool in your workforce training arsenal. And it's how, if you use Hancock Software's mobile app, if you wanted to use it, how you set it up uh, for a real, true, guided, step-by-step -step audit. So it is the start time. I'm going to press record. If you are, if you have colleagues or if you want to share this later, if you signed up for the webinar, um, I'll send the recording out. Okay, let's get going. So how to go through a step-by-step -step guided audit. Uh, I'm going to bring my mobile device up on the screen. Mine is an iPad. Um, you can use, you know, I could use my laptop computer if you don't, if you think you're in the field and you don't want to use a mobile device. So a mobile device can really be anything, a tablet or a laptop computer. Um, it doesn't have to be like an iPad that I'm showing on my screen right now. And our app is called Hancock Mint here. And the way I set it up, I just have two sample um, energy assessments. And I'm going to pretend like I'm walking through a residential utility program. And in this energy assessment, this one that says smoke test, this isn't really finished yet. And Mickey Mouse is finished. So I wanted to start on the first one. Imagine this is a scheduled assessment. Um, when you view the project, you're gonna see a to-do list. And this is what we mean where you could set your uh, set up your workforce to have this guided audit. We are targeting for Hancock to have like a guided, truly BPI guided audit where an auditor can go through and see the BPI standards step by step. Uh, if your program runs a little bit differently, the good part about this is it's configurable based on your program. So what you're seeing here, it's a um, residential utility program in the Northeast. And the to-do list, to give everybody an overview of it, starts with getting customer consent you start, you know, in your audit, you start your time of the audit. So you click start time and you be you would be able to start the clock for the audit. And after that, step one is getting the customer to sign information, getting their release, making sure you have their billing data, um, getting consent to do a DOE home energy score, all the consent stuff in this utility program is steps uh, like one to four. Then the next step in this utility program is to do your health and safety testing. And then more health and safety standards like asbestos, mold, vermiculite. So you're gonna see uh, to prepare and kind of save time for this webinar, what I did was I did the, the uh, pre-approval, you know, the, the signing of the documents and the health and safety checks before and I left it so I can walk you through the step-by-step -step guided audit after. So that is first just a, um, you know, just an intro to what we're doing here. Okay. So this is a scene where, this is a scenario where you have uh, people you want to train. You can use it as a training tool. M most utilities and uh energy efficiency, low income programs use this as a guided audit tool. And you're going to see even we calculate savings as we go along too. So again, this job smoke test, this record, uh, I've done some basic data gathering. I haven't got into the meat of the energy audit yet. And I'm going to start with that. Okay. So I go to smoke test and, um, Let's start with the first, let's say your program requires that you need to get customer releases for anything. Um, if you wanted your workforce uh, to do that for you on site, you would see that the information not yet complete is in white and the information that is complete is in green. 
So I have set this up, so I have not yet gotten the customer signature. So I go here and I can see the um, billing release form and I can see you know, whatever your program requires for sign off and then you can fill it out. So you can say, you know, I do authorize and then you know, they sign and they date. So it's just one step in before you complete the audit, if there's any steps for electronic documentation that your program requires, you can set up our mobile app to do so. Taking a look at this, this program requires um, health and safety forms to be signed. It requires the DOE home energy score, um, the permission to generate it to be signed, and some billing releases. So no matter how complex or simple of a program you're running as far as the customer consent part, you can store all that documentation in here. And after you've signed it, you know, I pressed saved and signed and it's going to save a PDF for me and it will sync back to um, our cloud site. So again, you just go here to customer release and then you can save and sign the customer release. I got to do the whole thing. So it will be incomplete until every component of that electronic form is saved and signed. And then when you move back, it checks off for you automatically. And that's the introduction to what the step-by-step -step guided process is that you can think about using as a training resource. So after that electronic document, we get to the health and safety part of an audit, which is pretty typical. This house that I have is, um, you know, you can look here for basic house information. And if I look at the building info, I can see that it is gas powered. Um, I can see the type, you know, basic house information. If I look at the client info, I can see quick contact information. So when I go to the next step here in health and safety, uh, I just want to just show you what like a sample health and safety form looks like for this program. So in health and safety, you're gonna see um, items like combustion testing. And whether it failed or passed any tests in particular. So in the combustion testing section here, do you see how some of these fields are have red highlights on them? You as the program administrator, you can define which exact data entry fields are required versus which are uh, not required. So this program requires that you Acknowledge that you do the combustion safety test if it's required or not. Did it pass or fail? And this, you know, if you're an auditor, this stuff's going to look pretty familiar to you. This is pretty common in a BPI guided audit. And then when you're done, that step of the audit, you press done. And then you can go back to your main list and you have seen that the health and safety part is checked off. So that's how we go through step by step. Um, what I wanted to show is when you get into energy savings characteristics and you start to want to create a proposal and then uh, you want to make sure that your workforce touches on each component of your guided assessment. So in the bottom half here, um, I have insulation and then I go to the HVAC system and then I go to uh, blower door testing, air infiltration. And then at the end of this audit, they require the base load. 
because this is a gas example. So they put the base load at the end of this audit. And then they called a kitchen table wrap up where they want you to sit down with the customer and review what you did and give a initial report. Because if some of these are direct install items, you can even say like what you did today saved this much energy and what you're proposing and the rebates about available will save more. Now, before I start the energy savings part, note an MMBTU goal. Um, a lot of times uh, when you go, your workforce will be able to see the savings climb as they do the energy audit. So as I start to enter energy savings measures into this audit, I'm gonna see that MMBTU goal climb. Here for this house, I have forecasted um, an MMBTU goal of 14, and I'm gonna see it climb as I do the weatherization measures on it. So let's start with the first next step of the guided audit, which is insulation. You know, so your workforce, they see green is everything I completed, white I need to complete, and to complete it, they simply press the play button. So they press the play button, and they can see that um, wall in insulation. And you can see any required field about wall in insulation. The next step is attic floor insulation. So you add the attic floor and you see the required types. You know, my purpose of this webinar is not to go through like every single energy audit component because you all already know this. You'll get an idea. Uh, again, these required fields are based on what your program requires, you know. So you fill, maybe I'll just finish filling out the attic part. Um, just asphalt and then the roof color, we'll put it medium. And let's say, do you wanna recommend a measure? Yes, as an auditor, I need to, let's say, insulate this um, vent, this vented attic. Uh, unfloored attic. So I go here and I select recommend and then you can recommend an improvement insulation and you can check the type of insulation you're recommending. So it's a real simple guide for your workforce on what to put in as the existing conditions and what is allowed to be recommended. So in this case, you see my program has a generic measure called attic floor roof insulation because really it's a um, rebate program. The uh, homeowner can go after the participating companies and get the rebate as long as they prove that it meets, um, sorry, this certain R value component. Now, if you're running a program, let's say you're running a low income program, you have approved measure list, you might see these recommended measures more detailed. Okay, now what we've done so far is we're doing the insulation. Um, I'm not gonna keep doing the insulation. I'm gonna just jump around to show you a little bit more components because I didn't finish the insulation, it didn't check off. If you can imagine, if you're doing like a simple, quick audit, you know, you could make this guided steps only whatever, six step, steps, show a priority list of six steps, anything like that. I wanna go into air infiltration and then we will, um, just to show you like the different. So within a blower door test, you know, they require that you put the blower door pretest component in. So you say, yes, I perform the blower door test. What is the pre-CFM? What is the um, target post-CFM or what is the actual CFM at this point? So at this point, it's just a target. And then the test information in. 
uh, see how some things aren't required. So maybe your program collects additional information. This is also calculated fields. So in our app, if you have a field that's calculated as the auditor goes along, then um, you can just use this calculated field information. Okay, when I go back to my guided audit, um, I'm going to open an audit that I have finished before this, Mickey Mouse, to show you so you all get a sense of like when you're done each step. Again, each step is I finished is in green. Um, how to approach the, the, the final sales conversation or whatever, education conversation. So you can see like I have done the audit and my MMBTU savings is climbing up out of the goal. And let's say I want to wrap this up with a DOE home energy score or with a customer proposal. So I select, for example, the customer proposal and your branding, whatever your branding would show as whatever cover page. Um, this is a direct install program at the top. So there were no, it was a gas house. So there were no direct install items here. But as far as the envelope goes in this audit, we did um, attic floor insulation. We did basement ceiling, sill box insulation. We installed triple pane Energy Star windows, we recommend it. And just air sealed the building envelope. And it shows the gas savings in therms or CCF, whatever your program shows. And then um, for the electric savings, if any of these had electric savings, like if this was electric heat, it would separately show the electric savings. It handles the, the, the calculations handle fuel switching if you're changing from a fossil fuel to um, a heat pump per se. So we analyze the calculations there. And then if your program has proposed rebates, proposed financing options, all of that is in the proposal. So this annual savings for this job is recommended to be you know, about $620 and it has a five-year payoff. Um, what you see here is a template. So if, you're, if your organization, you know, uses a different template, that's what would show in the Mint app. So the idea was seeing, to see if you all could envision how a tool like this can be used to help train your workforce as you're scaling your energy efficiency efforts. So how does all this guided audit get entered in the first place is um, the next thing I'd like to show you. I'm going to stop mirroring my mobile device and I'm going to jump over to our cloud site. Now, depending on your organization, you can use our backend or you can use your own backend and we'll send information from our backend to your backend if that makes sense. Uh, but it's still, everything needs to be configured in our backend. And this includes this flow at the top, administration of just who can use the system, qualified applications, who is applying for the, you know, who is a target for the program, um, actual projects that are participating in the program. You don't want everything to be housed on your mobile devices. So after you sync, uh, that becomes a project back here, and the measures that are allowed on the program. So um, that is the flow on the top. I think I let this idle too much. Hold on. And I wanted to drill down on the measure level because many of you may be running um, multiple programs and want to use one app. And this is really where the measure level can empower you to manage all the rules behind your program. Uh, so let's say we're looking at a direct install measure like pipe insulation. Your program um, adds the qualified measures and all the properties behind the qualified measure um, 
are added to. I'll show you that. And then you say, of this direct install item, which programs uh, support this item, this measure? So here the gas program does, the electric, the whole, this is um, an example of the state of Connecticut. Actually, every energy efficiency program in the state of Connecticut supports this measure. But if we were to switch to something like Windows, uh, we might find something different. Let's take a triple pane Energy Star program. Then you'll see like which programs want to support that measure versus not. So it's tailored when you sync to that mobile Mint app that I showed. This measure, Energy Star Triple Pane, would only be available to the programs that you said you were that the house is qualified for. Okay, um, we have about 10 minutes left. And before I show more, I just wanted to check to see if there were questions. Okay, somebody didn't have audio, but maybe they fit, figured that out. Um, if you didn't have audio, and uh, you guys are all still here, so I am thinking you all can hear me, uh, then I'll, just when I send out the recording, you'll be able to hear the audio. All right, so we do have 10 minutes left. Um, I'd like to show you a little bit more things about what makes Mint uh, configurable versus like here's here's an app that you need to that you need to use. The idea is we house everything in a program template. So if you're doing a gas program, you have a mobile template where you say for gas, I need these required fields in these measures, and maybe your electric or maybe your DOE home energy score program is different. So each one has a program template in it. Um, and what you can do is if you are, if you have a data system already and you're just like, I wanna use Hancock for the mobile part. I don't wanna use Hancock for a whole data management system. Um, we have a lot of clients that do that today and they just use our API. So what you would do is your company would write an API using our open API and we would receive leads and those leads would be scheduled in your system. And then when you sync to the mobile app, like I showed you before, you would perform the energy assessment part and you would sync back when you're done. And when you sync back, it doesn't yet sync it to your system. It syncs it to our backend here. And then you have an export trigger that would send the data back to your system. And what it entails, if, you, we, if our organizations work together, uh, we don't really need to program any mapping to your system. Um, we do have a user interface here where you can just go in here and check out the mapping yourself and map it to your fields using our API. So let's take a look at that. Let's say in this case, I wanna see all the projects uh, that are scheduled for the mobile energy audit. And then I wanna send a project data back through an API. So when you see the projects at the project list screen, you'll have a button here where you can export a project and send it uh, back through the API. Okay. Uh, there is a question from Alistar. You're in the UK. Is the platform customizable for currency metric units? Like currently the fields do not read whether you, you know, there is not a setting for metric currently. Uh, but Alistar, if you want to talk to us after the webinar, we can talk to you about that need. But currently, no, it is just, there is no metric. 
Um, I do see a lot of the current customers on this webinar that are using Hancock today or will be use, using Hancock. And I wanted to show you um, an example of if you're using Hancock, what it would look like. Uh, this guided audit here. For a low income program, like many of you on the call today, uh, this could be a DOE priority list. Or it could be like low income and non low income are moving to that BPI standard where they want you to do, you know, that standard qualification and training where they want you to do the step by step audit, which this kind of is right now. It's set to do health and safety. Um, mitigation first, then energy efficiency, then electric base load, if, um, and then edu client educational components. Okay. Um, the app frequently asks questions more app, you know, you don't need to just use an iPad. You can use anything. A lot of people are comfortable with just taking their laptop computer, uh, you don't need internet on your laptop computer. As long as you just sync beforehand, everything runs offline. Um, as far as Hancock goes, this one app can do a DOE home energy score. It can do a technical resource manual, like a deemed estimated savings approach. So for example, if you're located in New Jersey, we can use New Jersey's Mid-Atlantic Technical Resource Manual to generate savings and proposals. We are also in the process of building full energy modeling. So this app will also be able to do interactive energy modeling. We have a different app called HEAP right now that is approved by DOE for weatherization. We're building that calculation engine and we're moving it into this app. So uh, no matter, the idea is it's flexible, so that's it. You know, no matter what your program is running or how you see your program scale, um, the calculations behind this are capable of energy modeling, BPI standard, and DOE home energy score, and simply an estimated savings approach based on your technical resource manual. Okay. Well, let me check and make sure if anybody has any questions. Um, we're running a webinar next week. If you'd like to attend, I'll send out some, some emails about it. The webinar next week is about new features this year, and it'll be a lot of the new features um, not on mobile on our back end. Okay, so the, uh, there's just two questions. Is there an easy way to export only the customer information for upload into a company CRM in bulk? Yes. So we have an API and you can program that API to trigger in your system, um, you know, how, how you would like. Then is there an option to test your software before purchasing? Perhaps complete one or two test audits. Jeremy, great question. Uh, I think yes, Jeremy. I'm going to reach out to Kevin, who does our sales, and I have your information, probably your email, when you registered this. So I think you know if you want to do that. Um, it just depends. You have to like know that you might be lost because it really depends on the the kind of audit you want to do. So um, yeah, sure. We would make you very comfortable before if you want doing buying anything. Okay. Well, thank you guys for your attention um, for the 30 minutes. And I think the next webinar is going to be longer because we're going to go through new features, but it's more of the um, cloud site, the program management site. So if you're interested in that one, um, when I send the recording, I'll just put at the bottom the next webinar. If you're only interested in mobile, um, this is the webinar for you. You can reply to me if you'd like any follow-up. Thank you all. Goodbye.